Of all the crops I have tried to grow in my garden, none has frustrated me as much as brassicas. I've grown my own shower sponge. I've grown all sorts of different weird fruits. I've grown hundreds of pounds of potatoes, but something as simple as cauliflower, cabbage, etc., those have evaded me for many years. Not that I haven't gotten anything, but I just haven't gotten anything quite epic enough for myself. And so in this video, I'm gonna share with you, because I think this might be my best brassica year yet, all the mistakes I've made in troubleshooting brassicas so that you can have your best brassica season yet. Okay, here we go. Look at what I found when I looked inside. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous head of cauliflower. Here in the backyard, I've got some Brussels sprouts. I have some cabbage. In the front, I have some cauliflower and some broccoli. I've grown kohlrabi before. What do all these plants have in common besides that they're brassicas is that they're the exact same brassica, brassica oleracea, oleracea. I don't know how to say the Latin name. Oleracea. But nevertheless, they're just cultivars of the exact same species, which is mind boggling because they look so different. Brussels sprouts grown for those little guys that grow in between the main stalk and a leaf. Cabbage, it's just a bunch of furrowed leaves that create a head. Broccoli, the unopened flowers are what we tend to eat. And so all these plants have been bred for very specific reasons over the years, selectively by us human beings, but it's really the same species. Fascinating little fact. Now, whether you're in a cold or a warm climate, brassicas tend to be some of the more challenging plants to grow, myself included. I've struggled with them for many years, really, and I dare I say it, this might be my best year yet on all crops. So I'm gonna share some of the things that I've had to shift in my strategy. Number one is going to be timing. Timing is key for brassicas almost more than any other plant that I've grown personally. And the reason why is because it hates heat, it being any of them. They all hate heat. And in our area where it's winter right now, skies are perfectly blue and it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that, they don't even really want that. They'd prefer it to be probably a little bit colder and more temperate than that. And so what I've had to do in a warm zone is grow it in basically the winter. So I started it in fall and I'll probably harvest it in early spring. Now, if you're in a colder zone, you're gonna have to translate that to your area, but you really want cool, consistently cool temperatures with a decent amount of moisture. So if you get rain, you're really gonna to wanna to plant them sort of into that rain. They don't want anything to dry out, which brings us to some tips that I have for you on watering. I've got two watering tips that have really helped me grow better brassicas here in San Diego, really, but it'll apply to anywhere you live. Number one, just evenly moist soil as often as you can keep it that way. In our area, it gets dry, it sometimes rains. It actually rained last night, which was a blessing, so I don't have to water today. But if I did, here's what I would do. I would come through and I would hit the base of the cabbage. So I'd come in, just hit the base. Ideally, maybe you've got drip irrigation or soaker hoses or something like that. But if I know it's gonna be a hot day, this is the real killer tip here. Come in, let's do this. And I know you're probably thinking, hey, you've said not to water over the top of your plants. And I think generally it's an okay idea and an okay recommendation to not water over the top, maybe if you're growing tomatoes where you don't wanna splash up disease onto the plant. But with cabbage in warmer climates or if it's a hot day, you want these leaves to cool off. And so come out in the morning, make sure the soil's nice and moist, but then come out if it's a hot day in the afternoon, cool these plants down a little bit because it'll help them prevent themselves from maturing too quickly. A note for you on fertilizing your brassicas. We really eat the leaves of all of these plants, whether it's a huge head of curled leaves like cabbage or these tiny little guys like baby cabbage, AKA Brussels sprouts. So if you think about it, what do they need the most? They probably need the most nitrogen and that would be true. Generally in the beginning of their lives, especially you want to give them a nice feed of nitrogen, whether you do that organically with a nice side or top dress of compost. That's usually my go-to is I'm planting them in the late fall. I'll put about an inch or two of compost on top around them so that as winter rolls through, they've got a nice dose of fertility to keep them going through that decreased period of sun. That's really all I have to say on this. You don't want to fertilize too much as they're getting closer to harvest. In fact, sometimes over fertilizing, especially with nitrogen, can cause an aphid buildup, which is one of the two major pests that I personally struggle with, with my cabbage and my other brassica crops. So ease back as you get closer to harvest, especially when you're dealing with something like a broccoli or a cauliflower. All the tips mentioned so far, 
don't matter at all unless you plant it at the right time of year. This is a mistake that I've made before with my brassicas, at least for one season where I thought, hey, it's early spring, I might as well plant them. I plant everything else in early spring, or at least I start the seeds. Well, hey, it couldn't have been more wrong in my climate. There are three times where you'll have success planting brassicas depending on where you live. In my climate, that's gonna be a late fall planting. I can maybe get away with just directly in the winter, but why not plant it in fall? At least there's a little bit more sunlight and the temperatures are nice and cool. If you're in a colder climate and you wanna grow it in the fall, plant it in late summer so it extends and then you get to harvest it right before the frost comes and then you get a nice, crispy, delicious harvest. All these brassica crops tend to get sweeter and more flavorful as the temperature drops, which of course is another problem in a warmer climate. Now, if you also want a spring crop and you're in a colder zone than myself, then I would suggest planting it in very late winter or very early spring and riding it through spring up until temperatures start to warm up. Because really, temperature is the trigger here Anything else you try to do to mitigate some of the conditions that brassicas require won't matter if the temperature gets above a certain point in time. Even if you're watering the leaves, keeping the soil, shade cloth, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So those are your three times to plant your brassicas. Let's take a peek at this gorgeous head of cauliflower here. It is nice and white and it's nice and tight and we wanna keep it that way. So I'm gonna do something kind of weird here, but think about how these leaves are coming out. They're kind of coming out and almost curling over. Remember, it's the same species as cabbage. So it kind of wants to do that anyways, but this has been bred to have a large, large head in here. So what are we gonna do? We're actually going to take it and cover up this cauliflower until it's more mature. And so I'm gonna come through and actually kind of fold these leaves over. You don't need to do too, too many of them. We'll do about this many right here. Maybe we'll toss this guy in as well. I'm gonna cut some twine. So I've got a few of these big leaves here and all the smaller ones. And I'm gonna take a little bit of twine here, come around right around the halfway point of these leaves. And the reason why we're doing this is because if you think about it, sun hits the surface of the plant. It's gonna to start to turn that cauliflower head a little bit green, which is kind of unsightly, but also it's going to change the flavor profile. It's gonna be a little bit more bitter, a little bit stronger. If we do it this way, nice and white, nice and mild, a nice cauliflower, pure flavor. And all we're doing is just blocking it from photosynthesizing so it blanches the cauliflower head and it's a great way to preserve it. So my next tip for you here is on this broccoli. First of all, this broccoli is a little bit too old. So there's a harvesting tip for you. Well, you really want these florets to be nice and tight and compact. You don't wanna see them start to separate individually from one another too much. And you also certainly don't wanna see them start to open up. Because remember, these are all small unopened flowers, that's actually what you're eating. But the real tip, let me take what might actually be one of my new favorite harvesting knives, this is from Felco, it's a Tina knife. It's this nice sort of hawksbill knife, I'm obsessed with it. But let's say you do come in and you wanna harvest this broccoli. So I'm gonna come in and we'll just chop this off right here. Boom, come off really, really easy and that's it, right? That's all you're gonna get for the season? No, look at this, you've got one, two, three, four, five, there's even a couple more down below, secondary florets that you can also harvest for a nice, nice extra yield. Of course, this one's covered in aphids, but that's just the way it goes sometimes in the garden. Another thing you can do is look for varieties that are gonna work in your area. Heat tolerant ones for me, of course. Bell Star is a great one. I'm gonna put some other ones up here on the screen. But variety selection, timing and temperature, I would say those are your holy trinity of things to do correctly with brassica. Doesn't really matter if you choose the wrong variety. What else you do? Doesn't really matter if you plant it at the wrong time. What else you do? And if the temperature's wrong, what can you do? So those are the things I would really stress. And then some of these other little tips will just help squeeze out a little bit more beautiful and gorgeous looking brassicas. And I have one final update for you. Last year, we had San Juan Cabbage Toronto. I was trying to grow a giant cabbage. Sad to say, it failed. Here's a photo of me when I was crying and it was failing. It was a very sad moment for me. I was not happy about it at all. But his progeny, San Juan Cabbage Toronto Jr. is doing really well. I'm gonna show you that right now. Underneath this prison of love, as I will call it, is San Juan Cabestrano Jr., the offspring, or the continuation of my failed experiment last year. Now, why is it under this chicken wire cloche? Well, because what's the number one pest that I deal with here? Besides aphids, of course, it is going to be the cabbage moth, that white moth with a black dot on the wing that has these caterpillars that will decimate, I mean really decimate, any cabbage crop, any brassica crop that you have. So what you do to prevent it, the only foolproof way that I've personally ever found, and I've tried just about everything under the sun, is to do this. Take something that a moth can't fly through and cover it, especially when it's setting itself up for success. You'll see this cabbage is 
spotless. There's absolutely nothing on it. That's because I've kept it undercover literally from seed. I don't want anything touching this. I don't want anything blemishing it. This is my child and I will protect it this year at least with my life. I learned the hard way last year. So if you're dealing with cabbage moths, this or something like this, a floating row cover, a shade cloth can also help protect from the temperatures that we spoke about. Just cover it with something. It will do wonders. And with that said, good luck with your brassicas this year. Drop any questions down in the comments. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.